Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is game three between Hasu and Hey Pro, and uh, we're going to be spawning in on Lost Temple. It's a great 1v1 map, especially for Zerg versus Protoss. Uh, lots of possibilities. Protoss can go for that two gate expansion, uh, or uh, Zerg can go for you know a quick expansion and have a nice little wall of spine crawlers here. Uh, I really like this map, and uh, so far the first two games have been pretty exciting. The first game was a long macro-based game, but uh, it's the second game on Steps of War. Uh, hey Pro got a little advantage, edged out with his Zerglings in the early uh, game, and then just extended that by sending more and more Zerglings into uh, Hasu Ops' base, and eventually was overwhelmed. Uh, we saw Hasu do some really nice uh, crisis management with placements of gateways, with... Uh, a sentry that tried to get some nice force fields off, but ultimately I just think that map is just very Protoss unfriendly when it comes to uh, dealing with plays like that. Because the, the, the ramp is deceivingly li small. It, it's not small enough to get a single force field down uh, unless you're perfectly placing it, and I don't actually know where that spot would possibly be. Um, but anyway, so we're going to have the close air proximity positions with uh, Hey Pro spawning on the at like the three o'clock position as the red zerg and has you spawning at the one o'clock is position as the blue protoss so this is looking like uh, a normal build from hey pro and also once again the exact same build out of has you it's uh, pretty typical I mean, whenever you see uh, pros playing in these long games like this they have a lot of similar or long like series like five and seven game series is they have very similar uh, plays where they just do the same thing over and over again especially in the early game uh, so it's not not too bad uh, to see the same thing over again most most like mid-level players would think oh my god he's going the same build like that's so obvious why why wouldn't he try something different because he lost last game or because the opponent's gonna expect it when it turns out that actually you know the thing that's gonna win you the game most of all is not macro is not uh, like surprise it's just macro and good good play in general. And so I like this. Heypro has got actually two overlords in his base, and this is great because he's got one on each pylon, which means that he's going to know the very moment that a side core comes warping in, and thus he will know whenever his opponent will have uh, any kind of anti-air, which he can see now. The side core is going in now, so he can leave his overlords there for about another 40 seconds or so, and then he has to start moving them out. Um, so it looks as though Hey Pro has got two Zerglings out. He's taking a faster expansion this game. He has mined just enough uh, gas once again for the metabolic boost and then full guys. And he just opts to sit at around uh, 14 drones. I believe that's the number. I see. Yeah, 14 drones. Actually, he's making three more drones. So he's not going to be doing that, that same kind of play we saw last game. The wall in with the Zealots has finished. Um, this is kind of a problem with this build. I like. Um, I like doing this, this, the 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 side core, like here or something, and so making a single wall in. That way, you can get that second zealot out, and then have this first zealot just kind of run off on his own and and kill zerglings while his little buddy stands back and guards the door. Uh, and so, ooh, I like this placement of this overlord. Uh, it's really hard to see. I don't even know. I think that that you could hit that if you had some uh, stalkers coming out. So it's it's kind of kind of a risk, but at the same time. Uh, allows for good scouting. He's going to be able to see whenever probes transfer to the natural without actually having to even to scout it. And so that overlord placement right there will will allow him to see that. It's pretty awesome. Not to mention, you know, he could Nidus Worm right there if he wanted to at some point. People don't generally check their mineral line for Nidus Worms, especially on this this map. So with the expansion down, there's the probe transfer going off now. I'm going to be transferring a queen down there. It hasn't, or he has the second queen out already. A little bit of damage on that spawning pool from that initial probe harassment. So two sentries out, probably a little bit scared about what happened last game. So he's gonna be doing that. And here comes the same play we saw on the first map. I'm 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 just a little confused by this placement. I mean, obviously it makes much more sense on this map. Oh my goodness, he's gonna force field? No, he's not. He knows he can't get up that ramp, so no real point to. And he did it anyway. Wow, what a baller! Hey pro, you are just so awesome. He's getting that Zergling up the ramp, even though he knew it should have been force fielded. Although, honestly, with only one Zergling left, I almost think it's probably... As long as you don't have anything in your base, you don't want him to scout, like, you know, a fast Stargate or something retarded. Um, I don't mind getting, leaving that, letting that Zergling in over wasting a force field. 
Um, especially whenever it looks like you're going to be doing some kind of zealot sentry play. Oh, I just got to get a little drink of water here. I've been casting for like two hours straight, and it's like 1.30 a.m., and I have to get up for work tomorrow. Oh, and I was going to talk about that, and this is kind of a lull in the play here. It looks like both players are just kind of macroing up, getting their expansions. A little bit of aggression coming out of uh, Hey Pro, but I don't think he expects to be able to get in here, although I would like to see another building get thrown down here. Don't really want to have to use your sentries to wall in this whole entrance, because that's really not that effective. Is that Zergling still alive? I don't think so. Although, uh, with that Overlord here, he really doesn't need it. Oh. So anyway, I had such a wonderful, surreal experience at work on Thursday. Actually, no, today is Thursday. Um, actually, today right now is Friday, but uh, on Wednesday, we had a meeting, and it was, it was my first, oh, this is what it's like getting fucked by Corporate America meeting. Because they essentially told us that we were going to have to work two or so hours more than usual each day because of some giant project that we have. And that giant project commenced today, and so I got in at about 8.30, and I worked through lunch, and I left at about, you know, 5.45 to 6, and got home at like 7.30 or 8 due to the hour and a half of traffic, so it was horrendous. But in this meeting, they were essentially trying to convince us why it was good for us to work an extra two hours a day without getting paid and stay late and stuff. And I, everyone was so pissed off. They are just sitting there yelling at each other, like yelling at like the... the the analysts that haven't been there for just a month, like me, because, you know, I'm not going to yell about it. I don't want to get fired. I just got there. Um, they're, the other ones are all pissed off yelling at the management, and everyone's angry. And I'm just sitting here smiling because I'm just thinking to myself, wow, so it actually does happen. I just, it's such a strange feeling to realize that I was completely getting taken advantage of, and there was nothing I could do because I didn't want to lose my job. kind of sucked. But anyway, so... Um, in response to that, I just came home and took a four-hour nap and woke up and started casting StarCraft immediately. Uh, and, you know, I'm behind by about five hours in work. That two-hour project took about four hours to do today, and um, so I'm super excited about that. That's just great. So anyway, back to the game. We can see that Hey Pro is um, doing a really good job of spreading this creep. Uh, one thing that I love to do with Zerg, even though I don't play them that much anymore, I'm going to try and play them some more, is um, spread this creep with a little creep tumor overlord pair. The creep tumor and the overlord, they like each other. They like to spend time together. And the creep tumors, they like to chase the overlord. It's a little game I play where the, the, the overlord is playing hard to get. So every time the creep tumor spawns, the overlord moves a little fur further away. And the creep tumor is like, man, I got to chase him again. And so you make this little like path, and it actually spreads the creep about twice as fast as um, it should. Or it, it normally would with the... Oh. I feel so bad for that overlord that I was just talking about, you know, his little love interest. And then, oh, nice surround. He's going to make him force the uh, the blink. And then uh, Hasuab's doing the right thing. He needs to get up here. And then he needs to blink up to the high ground to save these forces. So great play by both players. Um, uh, hey Pro trying to force uh, the blink by, with the Hydras and then get the surround with the Zerglings. And then Hasuab's with awesome control, knowing, oh, I need to move this way. And then I need to come up here and, and blink up onto the high ground. So really liking that play, although I think that Hey Pro's macro is just a little bit stronger right now. This many stalkers with Blink 